Motorized camera sliders are really cool, but even budget one or two axis models are pretty expensive. As you add more axes to control pan, tilt, zoom, and focus, the price can quickly skyrocket to thousands of dollars. I want to build my own instead, and release the plans and codes so other people can build similar machines for themselves. My plan is to start with a two-axis machine, X for moving back and forth, and RY for panning. I think I can do better both in terms of the functionality I'm looking for and the price. Also, it's boring to just buy one. I know I'm not fooling anybody pretending otherwise. Here is the first prototype of CamBot. It's just a single axis moving back and forth right now, but the basics do seem to be working. So if I rotate this, you can see it's a belt, and then there's a stepper motor that's driving uh, this carriage back and forth. So uh, I'm really happy with this print overall, or these prints, uh, but there are a few minor issues. So some things like bolt holes that are a little bit too snug, I'll just need to adjust those tolerances, that's easy enough. Um, additionally, this bread boat board won't actually fit on top here. Uh, it, it will run into these screws. So um, that's okay because I wanted to move to perf board pretty quickly anyway. Uh, however, the perf board connection is also pretty inconvenient. So right now I would need to remove eight bolts here, flip the whole thing over, remove some nuts just to get the, the perf board off and then do the whole thing in reverse to put it back on. And that's, that's a giant pain. So I'm gonna switch that to embedded nuts as well. And then finally, uh, you can see these bolts are standing kind of proud. That's because I made these M3 holes, but they're actually M5. Uh, bolt threads in these pillow blocks. So I'll need to fix that. But I'm actually not going to fix that by changing the hole size. I'm going to leave those as M3 because uh, these, these blocks from Amazon are just really sloppy. They, they move back and forth a ton. Let me, uh, let me disconnect this. And uh, they're, they're also quite noisy. So if I slide that, yeah, it's just not a good sound. It sounds pretty grindy and just a lot of back and forth slop. So that means that the plate shakes back and forth as it gets pulled along and the video is basically unusable. Thankfully, a friend already suggested Igus bearings when I shared some initial progress. So I ordered some and it's a different world. They slide silently and have basically no play on the rod. Now I need to make those updates in CAD and run some new prints. Before I get back to design, how does all this work anyway? The magic here is something called a stepper motor which is the same thing that powers pretty much all filament-based 3D printing. Steppers can be really precisely controlled. For example, this one moves 1.8 degrees per step. That means each step is 1 200th of a full rotation. It's common to use something called micro-stepping to subdivide this even more. I'm currently driving CamBot's stepper at 1 256th micro-step resolution, which means each micro-step is only about 0.002% of a rotation. In other words, it takes 51,200 micro-steps to make the output shaft turn one time. Knowing the number of steps in rotation and the circumference of our output, we can calculate the number of steps needed to move a given distance. Steppers have a couple other nice properties. First, they can be found for pretty cheap. This one came in a pack of five for about nine bucks each. They're also very quiet. Even if I hold it right up to the microphone, it just makes a small robotic sounding noise. All right, enough procrastinating. I need to make those design updates and actually write some software to control this robot. This took a lot longer than I was hoping. I spent basically a full day working on these updates, but I'm pretty happy with where it's at now. I went back through and parameterized most things, which I probably should have just done from the start. Uh, I also, oops, I also added adjustable belt tensioners on the redesigned end caps. So hopefully that'll make setup and adjustment fine tuning a little bit easier. Uh, I'd already modeled these existing, the existing pillow blocks that I was using. So I just split that model and so it's printable and so I can fit the bearings inside and I made a hole for the bearings. So you can see there's ridges in there that match up with grooves in the bearing to hold them in place. So hopefully that works all right. The last big change I made is this top piece. So this is the first camera mounting plate. It's the most basic plate. So it's got holes for power and for the shutter release. Uh, this is power, this is the, gonna be the shutter release. And then it's got slots on the top for thumb screws so they can slide in there to mount ball heads or whatever other camera equipment. I also spent a couple of evenings starting on an interface to program movements. It's based on music or video timelines where each track represents an axis and time runs left to right. For example, I can add a right to left movement that travels 20 centimeters over 30 seconds. Or I can add some movements to the pan axis so that it rotates at the same time that it's moving. Um, and you can see that it automatically uh, creates new spaces and stuff in there and they butt up against each other. So this is obviously still needs a lot of work, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. 
Additional axes will show up below here, and I'll be adding support for more axes in future episodes of this series. This app is just being served by my computer right now, but uh, I can also build it as a static bundle and upload that to the ESP32 board. Now all I need to do is write some microcontroller code to interpret this JSON and turn it into the correct motor movements. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Famous last words. Pretty cool, right? So you just watched about 30 seconds of montage, but it's been well over a week since I last said anything in this video. Obviously it's working, but let me give you a bit of a tour. Before I talk about the PlayStation controller support though, let's try out a pre-programmed movement. So I've added this little play button to the web interface, and when I click that, the robot's gonna go through a homing procedure, and then the camera will do whatever was programmed. So one issue with this design is that the center of gravity is pretty high up off the rails, so it's easy for the camera to get into an oscillating motion, especially when I've got a big camera and lens and teleprompter on there. That'll definitely need to be addressed in a future redesign, but thankfully the majority of the effort here has been in software, so that'll be easy to adjust to a redesign frame. The other major addition from last week is, of course, the PlayStation controller support. So this is really fun to play with and didn't end up taking too long to implement. I'm using a super convenient library simply called PS Controller to interpret the commands from a DualShock 4. The way PlayStation controllers pair with a console is simple. When you connect them via USB, the console writes its Bluetooth MAC address to a location on the controller's onboard memory. Whenever that controller boots in the future, it checks that memory location and attempts to connect to whatever MAC address it finds there. There was an existing open source tool called Six Axis Pair that allowed you to write an arbitrary Mac to a PS3 controller. I quickly bodged together an update that allows it to talk to PS4 controllers instead, and re-released it as DS4 Pair. Using DS4 Pair, I then wrote the Mac address of my ESP32 to this controller, and it just started working. <laughs> Honestly, I was shocked too. I was hoping this gear mechanism would work alright, but honestly, it's a jittery mess. I'm pretty sure the whole thing would need to be a lot more rigid and precise for gears like this to work. There's at least a couple degrees of backlash in there and the entire thing shakes constantly, even with a tiny camera and lens on it. I'll definitely be refactoring this to use a belt, which should help with a lot of the problems I'm seeing. I just didn't have any closed loop belt on hand. However, I'm still happy with this print because it got me all the answers I need for my redesign. First of all, the rotating connection between the two parts is working great. The RY housing holds a slip ring, which allows wires to pass through without getting all twisted up. It's secured to the base plate with an M3 bolt. In the future, those slip ring connections will be used for shutter control and eventually sending commands to a second microcontroller for the other axes. For now, I used it to connect the RY homing mechanism. It'd be pretty difficult to put a homing switch in the rotating piece, so I'm using an infrared LED and photodiode instead. One lives in the base and the other lives in the housing. The microcontroller detects when the lights line up through little holes in the 3D print, and from there it acts mostly like any other switch. There's still a lot left to get this project to a usable, releasable state, but that's where I'm going to leave it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more CamBot and other projects.